Hello, my name is Mark Miana. I'm our Vice President of Sales and Partnerships here at Glue. And welcome to Glue Academy, video number two, Lifetime Value. Glue is the most widely used e-commerce and multi-channel business intelligence system. Think about that for a moment. We're not just any business intelligence system. We are the business intelligence system dedicated just specifically to e-commerce and multi-channel. Um, no one in the business knows how to bring you to greater profitability with your data than us if you're an e-commerce and multi-channel business. Today, we're going to talk about bringing you to greater profitability through the lens of lifetime value. One of the most important metrics to understand, also one of the most difficult metrics to understand as you're trying to understand moving your business forward. All right, let's get to it. Lifetime value. Everyone can relate to the equation, revenue minus costs equals profit. You don't need us for that. In fact, you don't really need anything for that other than some basic math. However, the challenge with running the e-commerce and multi-channel business is the fact that revenue is a dynamic number as you upsell and acquire customers, right? Lifetime value actually swaps for overall revenue because the lifetime value of a customer minus cost is actually the thing that equals your profitability over time. Knowing this, let's give a definition for lifetime value. Lifetime value is the amount of money a customer will spend with you until two things happen. That person dies or you go out of business. Morbid, I know it's not exactly the the um, happiest definition in the world, but it is in fact a definition. It's all the money you can ever expect from any one of your customers. The math or the equation behind it is as follows. The lifetime value of a person or set of persons equals the average order value of a person or set of persons multiplied by the average purchase frequency of a person or set of persons, right? So the more someone buys from you at a time and the more often someone buys from you at a time, the more profitable your business becomes. In the grandest scheme of things, what you're going to find is you are either a quote unquote average order value heavy type business or an average purchase frequency heavy type business. You're never going to be both. An average order value heavy type company, I want you to think of high end companies like uh, diamond rings, cars, really, really, really high end electronics. Think, for example, Carvana the what they call car vending machine company probably see commercials for the past couple of years their strategy is massive massive investment prior to the customer journey or in that customer journey leading up to one big purchase right um typically you're buying one car every 10 years or so uh that's a really really long time frame so there's massive amounts of investment in that customer journey leading up to one big big purchase uh, think digital management platforms, DMPs as they're called, like Google 360 or, or Adobe Audience Manager. Those systems are north of three figure, uh, six figures a year, deep into hundreds of thousands of dollars. So a lot of the analysis and number crunching done in an average order value heavy type scenario is typically going to be reserved for the largest companies out there because the marginal return on such a massive investment is only going to be reserved if you're pulling in north of about $99 million a year. What we're gonna probably talk more about is an average purchase frequency heavy type company. Clothes, shoes, uh, makeup, food, pretty much anything sold online nowadays is gonna be in an APF category. My definition for that is any company that's goal is to get the customer to buy more than once. Even a phone case company is an average purchase frequency heavy type company. There's large chunks of time in between the phone case purchases but nonetheless, they can expect more than one purchase from a customer. For example, me, I, I'm a Mophie guy. Mophie is a phone case brand. Every time I have broken or have gotten a new phone, broken them a little bit more than gotten new ones, unfortunately. But just like breathing, I go and buy a Mophie right away. I don't even think about it. And that's the type of relationship and loyalty we're looking to expect from our customer base. Let's break this down mathematically real quickly if you don't believe me. So an average order value heavy type company, the goal is to get the customer to buy once. Look at the math. Lifetime value doesn't really apply to a company like this, right? Because if average purchase frequency is one, 
Well, then lifetime value by default becomes average order value. And thus, we can understand that getting that sale and moving on is the name of the game. Not what we're going to talk a lot about today. Instead, we're going to talk about more of an average purchase frequency heavy type company where the APF is greater than one, or at least the goal for the APF is greater than one. In this case, both the AOV and the APF are important. And keep in the back of your mind that it's way cheaper to upsell a current customer than buying a new one. We'll get into this visually in a moment. Knowing that we're, our goal is to get the customer to buy more than once, we have two goals. Number one, we want to acquire the right customer, not any customer, the right one. For example, let's take um, something easy, bikini.com. Okay. Uh, recently, I bought a wife for my bikini. Um, I bought a wife. I bought a bikini for my wife. Excuse me, off of bikini.com. I am not bikini.com's right customer, guys. I don't wear bikinis. I live inland. I don't live near a beach. That's a one-time purchase. That's not the right customer. Every time this company retargets me on Instagram or Facebook to upsell me, they're flushing their money down the toilet. So it's really important that we acquire the right customer to set ourselves up for success. I actually ran a webinar recently, and the question I got was, Mark, how do I upsell my customer base? What's the easiest way to do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is to set yourself up for success by acquiring the right customers that have the tastes for your product. That will make the upsell a lot easier. Goal two is to upsell those customers. Let's think about that. Understanding the bikini vendor, I visualized this for us to really get an understanding of what's going on here. So the left-hand side is the right customer, or let's say a woman who lives on a beach. The right-hand side is the wrong customer, me. <laughs> what you can see is the potential lifetime value of a woman who lives on a beach for bikinis is very high. She has a higher need, higher tastes for this particular vendor. And what that vendor is going to do over time is they're going to not just acquire the customer, which costs money, but to efficiently and consistently make sure that that potential lifetime value is realized through upselling the, through the insights that Glue gives you. And the difference between realized LTV and CAC is your profit, right? So the more that we want, th this is the line that we want to get as thick as possible right here. The wrong customer is me. So what's going to happen is this CAC is going to grow and grow as people retarget me. But I'm going to hit a ceiling one day. I might, there might be a small probability I buy another bikini for my wife, but probably not a very high one. So I, I think this is a good, this is a good job of explaining what exactly it is that we're doing from a goal standpoint. If we come back in here, let's kind of take a look at glue.io and see this number in action. So what this is, is the lifetime value of a vendor on a 12 month rolling window. And what I don't want you to pay attention to, I don't want you to be so concerned with this number right here, the absolute LTV of your store at any given time. That's not telling the story. What's telling the story is the rate of change on the slope of this curve over time, because that's demonstrating if in fact you're accomplishing both of the goals that I just outlined for you, acquiring the right customer and upselling that customer. The blue or the repeat customer, that's pushing the line up. If I were to cut acquisition altogether for any store, what would most likely happen is their LTV would dramatically spike and then plateau due to diminishing marginal returns. Let's take the bikini example, right? I don't care if you're a chick in Miami Beach, there's only so many bikinis that you're gonna buy before your need for bikinis is satiated and the purchase frequency really starts to um, plateau, which is why we need the new customer. Each new customer is starting with a lifetime value of zero. And that new customer acquisition is putting healthy downward pressure on the slope of your LTV curve. A lot of times around Black Friday, I get a lot of calls, hey Mark, my LTV is falling. Well, yeah, it's falling because you're getting an influx of new customers relatively more quickly than you have for the previous portion of the year, right? It's Black Friday. And that's healthy because that's laying down a strong foundation for growth or a strong foundation of people to upsell later 
as your business evolves and moves forward from that point. So in short, LTV is going a little bit high. Well, we need to set ourselves up for success for success by getting new people to sell things to. So if your LTV is getting a little bit high, you can invest that new cash into acquiring new customers. And the acquisition will push the slope of the line down. If I'm plateauing instead, like maybe from December to January here, well, maybe it's good to upsell. Remember, it's cheaper to upsell a current customer than to buy a new one. So if you're plateauing, the name of the game for you should be retention, retention, and we want to get that LTV popped back up a little bit. Great. What you're going to find throughout the next couple of videos is us talking about lifetime value and applying lifetime value to different areas of your business. Applying it to who you're selling to, to understand the tastes and the characteristics of your highest paying customers applying it to what you're selling to people, understanding what products do my highest paying customers value the most and buy the most, and what particular products are better used for upselling. We're going to apply it to attribution modeling, understanding when it's time to acquire new customers, what advertising channels to invest in, and when it's time to upsell customers, where the highest ROI for that exercise will be. And lastly, of course, is optimizing the timing of your approach. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the lifetime value video. I hope it was valuable. Um, if you have any questions, please write into glue.io or send me an email, mark.miano at glue.io. And looking forward to seeing you in the next video.